now we are going to go over the novel uh, with one part at a time uh, the longest parts being the first one and of course the second one where uh, you know we see the deterioration of Rochester and Antoinette's marriage and then a short last part of the novel but let's start with part one the Cosway family in Caribbean society and I've already told you that uh, they are they belong to the old planter aristocracy right we first meet Antoinette as as a nine-year-old in a Creole slave owning plantation uh, slave plantation owning family right we know that her father her English father was a plantation owner he also had slaves working in the plantation her mother is a French woman a French Creole right from Martinique so she is a French Creole the father is Cosway is of English descent and we see that the plantation colibri is actually falling into ruin it's in dire straits after the emancipation after the slaves have been uh, you know after slavery has been slave trade and slavery has been abolished there is of course underlying this whole you know the Caribbean society it's a very tense social setup there is a constant fear of creolization which means that there is constant fear of racial impurity constant fear of racial pollution and that we see is happening we know that the English father has uh, had relations sexual relations with number of women in the plantation and he had in the sorry in on the island and he has several uh, mixed race children living all over the island so racial pollution and racial impurity and the threat of racial impurity is very tangible it's very true it's just lurking beneath the surface so this it is a very it is very difficult to maintain this racial purity in on the island on this colony and to some extent this union in a way an English father and a French mother uh, with their history of uh, kind of animosity between England and Fr English and French uh, is also a, a little bit I mean they are all Euro they are both European but there is still some amount there is still some latent amount of intermingling and impurity not of pure English stock Antoinette her brother Pierre uh, Pierre is not really of a pure English descent they are of a mixed descent where you have a French mother a Martinique Creole mother and there is a kind of latent uh, sense of madness in her we already hear that she is very volatile and so on is it because she's a Creole or is it also because she is a French Creole so uh, that is uh, that is a background this is <clears throat> this is what is there in uh, this is this these dynamics these racial dynamics underlie the Caribbean society and they underlie this family as well this last slave owning family in Colibri after the and it is for it is with a very uh, mixed there is already intermingling and and now their old way of life is kind of disappearing we what about Pierre we, Pierre, we know that he is not well there is he's afflicted with some kind of illness some conditions he staggers there is kind of uh, uh, his illness his he's not uh, he's not normal and I would want to if you can I'm not I'm not putting that in uh, but I'm saying normal in inverted commas so he's not well right but his illness is in a way we can see it as a sign of this causeways or the old planter class the degeneracy of the old aristo planter aristocracy now causeway we know the father he drinks he fornicates he marries a French woman he has uh, he has numerous affairs and he sexually exploits the women who belong to the lower rung of the society maybe the slave women so 
Pierre's illness in a way is a sign of the degeneracy of his class right it is it is it is kind of a symbol of how the causeways are sliding into decadence and now we have the and then of course the ex slaves who are still working at Colibri, God Godfrey, uh, Sass, Christophine, Myra and although they are working for the causeway their sympathies lie with the blacks or the ex slaves they hate causeways and if you look at the history of slavery I mean in the if you just read the novel without understanding the context it would seem that you know these are uh, Myra, Tia, Sass, Godfrey you know he knew that the horse is going to be and its horse is going to be poisoned but he does not really alert the family about it their hostility seems to be uh, unfounded they're just hostile to whites but if we read it in the context of a history of slavery in Caribbean we would understand why these ex-slaves who are now servants do not really empathize with any do not really empathize with the causeways anymore uh, you know when the house is set on fire colibri at the it was the end of this this uh, uh, this uh, uh, part where the estate is set on fire we have this uh, hint that myra might have known about the fire he leaves the boy Pierre alone when the house uh, catches fire so in a way he might she might have known Godfrey knew that's what Annie says that Godfrey knew that the horse is going to be poisoned so these little acts or not little I mean they are quite hostile but their hostility is an expression of history of violence now Christophine's case is very important and she is a very interesting and important figure in this novel she is a slave who was raised by Antoinette uh, sorry she came to she's uh, she, she's a slave who raised Antoinette she also raised Annette Antoinette's mother and came to Jamaica to Colibri with Annette Cosway almost as if she is a dowry she's an object right so Christophine is a slave she comes from Martinique just uh, you know when Annette gets married she's she comes with Christo, uh, she come and it comes with Christophine to Jamaica and to Colibri plantation and we also know that people are afraid of Christophine they're afraid of Christophine because of her reputation as an Obia woman right? she is an Obia woman what is Obia now we don't know at the beginning if whether she is one or she's not uh, later on we does do get some hint that she has she she is well versed uh, she is well versed in alternate forms of knowledge right the knowledge which is not usual knowledge which does not fit in the western colonized educational setup so christophine knows things which lie beyond western education uh, thought educa western education uh, western thought western knowledge she has access to that knowledge she brings that knowledge so what is obia uh, it probably also could refer to syncretic religions i mean uh, they are the slaves uh, africans all around uh, they were forced and coerced to, into conversion to christianity but they continue to worship african gods in the guise of christian gods and saints and obia belongs to this kind of culture they synthesize english protestant traditions with uh, older african religion and christophine we know we can see uh, she is powerful she is str a strong woman and later on she is the one who interrogates rochester who holds up a mirror to him who questions his injustice she also gives advice to uh, antoinette which antoinette does not follow but in the novel we can say that she kind of stands for the spirit of anti-colonialism and resistance now the first insult that we hear that is leveled at the is that they are 
white they are called white cockroaches they are called white cockroaches Para this they are parasites they are living off the islands they are living off slave labor and also that they are now like insects that is they are no longer powerful the old planters have now come down they have become insects right so they are parasites they have lived off the island lived off slave labor and now they have become they have been de they you know they have been literally dehumanized and they have become they have literally they are crawling they are they are they become insects they become they have become pests so it is a reference to their reduced status now if we see uh, the conflict with tia uh, antoinette's conflict with tia uh, that is what Tia calls Antoinette. Now let's have a look at that. So we must talk about or we must refer to the novel a little bit and some of the instances before I go on to discuss what I was talking about uh, in uh, the, the kind of racial politics around Colibri that is building. Let me quickly point out the references to the topics that we have already discussed in our uh, video and refer to them to the book and here is I'm just on part one page one and here is a reference I think to the Emancipation Act the compensation promised uh, still waiting for this compensation the English that is the English government promised when the Emancipation Act was passed so the novel already kind of sets its context some will wait for a long time that means it will never come for some so in the novel we gives us an indication gives us uh, the kind of not just the political situation of the time but also its effect on people on individual people and that is some will wait for a long time the iman the government has already promised compensation but some will wait for a long time like mr literal we know how should how could she know here is it's, it's she is anik how could she know that mr literal would be the first who grew tired of waiting one calm evening he shot his dog swam out to sea and was gone for always so mr literal who was again a neighbor owner of the of a neighboring plantation with all its slaves uh could not could not weather this crisis the plantation is going to ruin his prosperity and wealth is destroyed his human property is lost the compensation does not come and so he commits a suicide so well, the novel in a way from the right from the start sets its uh, sets its context and here we know she that is a mother antoinette is a speaker here uh, let's start. Let's uh, read this first two paragraphs. They say when trouble comes, close ranks, and so white people did, but we were not in their ranks. We, the Cosways, are not in the rank of white people. So when the trouble, when the times are bad, that is when the slave they are facing the hostility by the slaves and all, close ranks become united, but we were not in their ranks. Uh, Antoinette says that the Cosways were not in their ranks. Why? The Jamaican ladies had never approved of my mother. Right? Why do, do, they, do they not approve of her mother? Because Christopher says, says because she pretty like pretty self. That Christopher, what she says is that she pretty like prettiness itself. She is so pretty. And that's why the Jamaican ladies are uh, jealous and therefore uh, they are not going to they are not going to embrace Annie Cosway in their circle. But Antoinette is a little more discerning and she says she was my father's second wife. Far too young for him, they thought. So one, what makes Annie Cosway uh, a misfit in the circle of Jamaican ladies is that she's too young, she's pretty and worse still, a Martinique girl, right? Martha Martinique from French colony. She's a French Creole. And as I said, that although although they are European, there is there are subtle political divisions, racial or uh, ethnic divisions, even within the European community. The European community is not really united. It's not really together. They are they are divided along these lines.
so uh, so she is a martinique girl and that's why uh, she is not you know when when english community or the europe uh, white people close ranks uh, anit cosway and cosways are helpless against them they are kind of marginalized we also see a little bit about the history of the island where she tells us that the road from the spanish town to colibri estate so spanish town hints at the history of the island it was earlier on a spanish possession and moved to then to the english uh, there are no there uh, where we lived uh, this, the road from the spanish town to colibri estate where we lived was very bad and that road repairing was now the thing of the past right so no longer the roads are no longer repaired there are no slaves there are no people to work so the entire infrastructure plantation everything is falling into ruins so who work the slaves and without the slaves the white community is helpless to you know in in the plantations even for the infrastructure for the basic amenities so as i said earlier on the reference to maroon and this is not the only place this is right after her horse is poisoned right uh the horse was not it was not sick he was dead and his eyes were black with flies i ran away and did not speak of it and i th i thought if i told no one it might not be true almost like a child like remember antoinette the speaker here is just a 9 year old but later that day godfrey found godfrey found found him poison he wa uh, found him he was poison now we are maroon my mother said now what will become of us so the reference to maroon here of course they are maroon they don't have any means to travel they don't have any means to get help they are uh, living in this very hostile uh, surroundings so in that sense she's talking about herself being maroon but there is also a community and maroon is a political term at that time so colibri we know all colibri estate had gone wild like the garden gone to bush right the garden gone to bush no more slavery why should anybody work this never sat but she says antoinette this never saddened me i did not remember the place when it was prosperous the mother remembers the mother sees and the mother is distressed and she kind of loses touch with the the reality for a while and it costs way but uh, she is antoinette is happy with the wildness around her she is comfortable in the surroundings uh, of course uh, uh, she she remembers and it remembers when the garden was beautiful and so on so on right but now it has gone wild uh, we also see that anit cosway is not a very uh, affectionate mother especially to antoinette we do not really see displays of affection at times she, she seems more, almost negligent but remember the amount of stress that anit cosway is living through with this hostility no means of income no husband plantation going to ruins and one child who is not normal right normal in inverted commas normal he was not well who's somehow there is some kind of illness with peer so no mentally not uh, he's slow so her her focus is you know getting through the day or one day at a time and then of course looking after peer she talks to peer she is considered uh, capiri she is considered to peer but not to the but not to antoinette that is because antoinette is fine antoinette is looked after by christophine antoinette does not really seem to need although emotionally she might but overtly on the surface she does not really need anit's constant uh, attention so uh, my students often ask me why is she such a negligent mother but i just ask them to consider what are the what are the things that she is living through now here is the fight between tia and antoinette now who is tia tia is the daughter of a of an ex slave right uh, she is a daughter of ex slave and the two girls become friend they are of the same age but tia is a daughter of ex slave and antoinette is a daughter of uh, an ex slave owner 
so they belong to completely different uh, history you know they belong to, they come from completely opposite places a daughter of a, a slave and a daughter of slave owner and you can just think about is there any friendship possible between them but still the two girls do get together and yet that friendship is fraught with tension that friendship is fraught with animosity they are never really uh, they they try to be friends but they can never really overcome that historical barrier the history the barrier of, of history is too strong now they go this is a fight that they have when they go to the spring the you know they go and take a bath in the uh, you know over here they go and take a bath and they're sitting and uh, she's still uh, in water Antoinette is still in water and Tia comes out she sees the pennies the new pennies that Christophine has given to Antoinette and Tia looks at them remember she is a daughter of ex-slave owner sorry she's a daughter of ex slave a former slave these uh, this community has been driven to poverty and has been kept poor and now they are now they are free and now they are questioning the authority of white planters and so tia challenges antoinette that uh, antoinette cannot uh, do somersaults under water and antoinette goes into the water and does somersault and when she comes up uh, tia is you know tia is laughing and then she picks up the pennies the money that christophine had given antoinette and christophine says that uh, sorry antoinette says that i did do it and uh, when uh, tia does not listen what does antoinette do look at this keep them then and then she resorts to a racial slur racial abuse right resorts to racial abuse immediately when it is remember it is antoinette here who begins this abusive fight i can get more if i and then she says she kind of asserts she uh, deals racial abuse she deals in racial abuse and then she kind of asserts a superiority i can get more if i want to and then tia kind of replies right that's not what i hear she said she hear all we poor she hear all we poor like beggar right and that's what tia says that we that is the cosways are now as poor as the beggars we ate salt fish no money for fresh fish the old house was so leaky you run with calabash to calabash is like a fruit uh, with water uh, uh, so you run with calabash to catch water when it rains plenty white people in jamaica real white people they got gold money they don't look at us nobody see them come near us old time white people nothing but white nigger now black nigger better than white nigger right so here we have talked about and we see the social and class divisions and the racial colonial divisions in this uh, antoinette starts the racial slur and tia throws it back to her he says that the old planter class are not in and they are the same as ex, uh, their slaves right they are as poor as the slaves the houses are leaky there is no money for food whereas there is another class of rich people now in jamaica they get gold and they have gold money real money the old planter class is just as bad is on the same social economic position as their slaves there is no difference between ex slave owners and the slaves and then she takes away tia takes away the clothes uh, right uh, she takes away antoinette's clothes and uh, antoinette has nothing uh, she has no other option but to wear tia's old clothes she wears tia's dress and she comes back home now seeing her daughter in tia's clothes kind of jerks her mother uh, from her kind of a trance and it suddenly sits up and notices that she, uh, that she is wearing tia's clothes and uh, there is no other clean dress that antoinette can have she's actually they're actually as poor as their former slaves and uh, she says she must have another dress said my mother somewhere and but christophine told her loudly that it 
that uh, she run wild, uh, that's what she says, she run wild, she grow up worthless and nobody care. And my mother walked over to the window, maroon, said her straight narrow back, her nar carefully coiled hair maroon. And then she says she must have a dress and they somehow kind of uh, rustle up a dress. They kind of get, somehow get a new dress that uh, Antoinette can have. Now why does this shock and why does why is it so important that she, why does why is the mother so distressed that uh, Antoinette is wearing Tia's dress because Antoinette in Tia's dress embodies the greatest threat of you know that you she embodies that fall from aristocracy English racial purity European uh, power to a complete degeneration of the planter class. So Antoinette wearing Tia's dress shows how this class has actually uh, now come down. Uh, the de the de degeneration or deterioration of their class privilege, their class authority, the racial authority, what they see as racial, uh, racial kind of uh, complex, that is, that is we see it playing out here. And uh, and it also they kind of you know recall their earlier days where you know he, he uh, she says they call themselves while Christopher uh, scrubbed my face and tied my plates with a fresh uh, piece of string she told me that those were the new people at Nelson so there are Nelson's rest so this Nelson's rest is Mr Luton's uh, Luttrell's uh, plantation Nelson's rest is Luttrell's plantation and we know that Luttrell uh, after emancipation, he had committed suicide because the plantation had gone to ruins. So he sa uh, uh, Christopher says that all Mr. Luttrell spit in their face if he see how they look at you. Trouble walk into the house this day. Trouble walk in. Christopher disapproves of the new owners, the newcomers who have taken over the old planter that was Mr. Luttrell. And... Uh, she uh, she says, and this is uh, Christopher going on. No more slavery. She had to laugh. These new ones have letter of of the law. Same thing. They got magistrate. They got fine. They got jailhouse and chain gang. So they uh, they got treat machine to mash up people's feet. New ones worse than old ones. More cunning. That's all. And that's what Christopher is saying. That it's actually uh, the, the law does not really change. They might have laws and they might have magistrates. But the machinery, you know, the, the machinery remains the same and the new ones are going to be more cunning. The slave owners were the slave owners. The new ones are going to be more cunning in their approach than the older ones. That is the older planter class. And here the new, who are the new ones? The people who have taken Mr. Literal Nelson's rest. These are the newcomers from Europe, Europe and as we discussed, these are the new merchant class that is coming now after the de degeneration, uh, after the old planter aristocracy is kind of faded away, is fading away. Now what happens in the course of first part? We know that uh, Anit, the Cosways are in dire straits, are in dire condition and uh, when when the newcomers come in the neighboring plantation, Nelson's rest, they're newcomers, uh, Anit Cosway reaches out to them and somehow she manages to uh, marry a person called Mr. Mason. She marries Mr. Mason and Mr. Mason does seem to like and is attracted towards Anit. I remember Anit is like pretty as her pretty self. She's pre uh, she, is she is pretty and she manages to get married to Mr. Mason and Mr. Mason is a rich man. He's a rich capitalist. He's a rich, uh, he belongs to the new merchant class who come, who have now come, who have uh, superseded the old planter class. Now, the first thing or the only thing rather that Anit asks of Mason is to take them away from Colibri, right? Although Antoinette is comfortable at uh, Colibri and it senses danger 
uh, there have been things like her, her horse being poisoned and so on. So she pleads and begs Mason to take them away from uh, the plantation and Mr. Mason dismisses her concerns. He is not really interested in, um, he's, he thinks that Anit is overreacting. He does not understand the, the history, as I said earlier, that the new class does not understand the culture of Caribbean, uh, the hostility between races, the history of the place. And so he dismisses and its mm. concerns and they keep, they stay on, they st stay on in a colibri till the night of fire, till the night of fire where uh, the the estate is set on fire and then they have to uh, just leave in that night and the brother uh, Pierre dies and Anit Cosway loses her mind she is she is um, uh, you know she blames Mason she blames Mr. Mason you know, all the marriage and everything that she did to save herself and her family has come to a knot and even at, you know although they are leaving now it is too late. Pierre is dead. So, in a way, Anit, no, Pierre is Anit's central concern. She's a child that she, uh, he is a child that she loved most. And the estate going on fire, losing your favorite child, it drives Anit mad towards madness. So, that is what happens to, uh, to, and, it, and that is how she loses her mind. We see her losing her mind in this fire. She literally goes and brings Pierre and she Pierre and she carries her. Uh, she carries his body, and um, so we see her. We see. I mean, we see why Annie goes loses her. I mean, here's a little excerpt when she discovers that Myra has left Perry and she left him, she ran away and left him alone to die, said my mother, still whispering. So it was all the more dreadful when she began to scream abuse at Mr. Mason, calling him a fool, a cruel, stupid fool. I told you, she said, I told you what would happen again and again. Her voice broke, but still she screamed. You would not listen, you steer, sneered at me, you grinning hypocrite. You ought not to live either. You know so much, don't you? Why don't you go out and ask them to let you go? Say how innocent you are. Say how you've always trusted them and so on. So she's kind of throwing everything that Mr. Mason must have told. You know, he's, uh, and in this, in this outburst, in this outburst of Anit, we see how smug and ignorant and arrogant Mr. Mason has been, right? So, you know, he pretends, he's pretending that the slavery has been abolished and they are better than the old plantation slave owning class, but they're hypocrites. There can be no, there can be no, uh, there can be nothing in common. The history of abuse is so horrible and the wounds of history are so deep that the hostility cannot uh, be overcome and that is what Anit knows and Mason does not really uh, understand that. Now when they are leaving, I think uh, I, I want uh, you to read this last part where she sees Tia and then not so far when Antoinette sees Tia, then not so far off I saw Tia and her mother and I ran to her for she was all that I was left of my life as it had been. And remember that while Anit had been scared, Tia, uh, Antoinette is just a nine-year-old and she's happy at Colibri. She is happy with this garden, no longer perfect, but going to bush a little while and so on. So she loves her life. Uh, she, had, she has loved her life at Colibri, but now she's leaving. And Tia, is, uh, she, Tia was all that was left of my life as it had been. We had eaten the same food, slept side by side, bathed in the same river. As I, ran, as I ran, I thought I will live with Tia and I will be like her. I will live with Tia and I will be like her. Not to leave Colibri, not to go out, not. When I, when I was close, I saw a jagged stone in her hand, but I did not see her throw it. I did not feel it either, only something wet running down my face. I looked at her and I saw her face crumple as she began to cry. 
We stared at each other, blood on my face, tears on her. It was as if I saw like in a looking glass. This is the last time that she tear, uh, she sees tear. But look at this, the passion and, and the kind of desperation in, this, in these lines. I will live with Tia and I will be like her. And they are like two mirrors. The two girls see each other like mirrors, blood on my face, tears on hers. Suddenly when they see each other, the self mirrored in the other girl and yet they cannot be together. They are not the same. The history is too deep. The history has, even even before they care, they they have even before they become friends. History is a barrier between them. They, it is a looking glass. She is like a looking glass, but that looking glass is a barrier, and that is a barrier of history. So after this. She falls ill and we do not really see uh, uh, Anit really after this except in some glimpses where we see that how she has deteriorated, how her condition is deteriorated and she herself has become a victim. She becomes a victim of sexual, sexual uh, predation in a way later on. So we see that there is already a barrier of history that separates Antoinette from uh, the African community. She cannot have friends like Tia. So if we move to the other side, when she goes to the, uh, to the convent, she meets other children and she meets other uh, so-called cousins. Now, uh, we know that uh, uh, her father has several illegitimate children all over the you know in different parts of the island and she meets them in the convent and here we have sandy you know uh, sandy who is alexander Cosway's son they have the same father sandy it has um, is her father's uh, it's kind of uh, once i would have said my cousin sandy right so my cousin sandy so this part of the probably she could have claimed familial relationships with the other children fathered by her by alexander cosway but mr mason's lectures had made me shy about my colored relatives i muttered thank you so uh, but marriage and its marriage with mr mason has separated has created another barrier for antoinette where she cannot claim any familial relationship or she has become alienated from the other uh, mixed or inter you know uh, the mixed race children of uh, the island so on the one hand she cannot be friends with tia but at the same time she's uncomfortable being friends with sandy the colored her colored relatives right and although sandy is friend i'll call uh, sandy is friendly and uh, he kind of you know he talks to the boy who tries to bully Antoinette and yet Antoinette is not at least as a child Antoinette is not able to uh, make friends with uh, colored her colored relatives so we see uh, on the one hand there is history and there is this angst of the black community or the African community against the ex slave owners on the other hand the superiority of Mr. Mason and you know the new coming uh, newcomers from Europe and Annie, Annie, because of Annie's marriage, uh, they have become separated. Uh, Antoinette, Annie, they have become separated from the colored, other colored relatives, right? So uh, she is, in a way, marginalized. She has, she belongs nowhere. Neither does she does not belong to the. She cannot be friends with Tia. She cannot be friends with the children, other children of mixed blood like Sandy here. She cannot, she is not accepted in the European society. We know Jamaican, English, European, she is not uh, accepted in that society. So, in a way, she has really no place to go. We do not see Anit much after this. So, as I said, and uh, we were discussing through the excerpts from the novel that Antoinette is 
kind of even though she's born in caribbean and she's part of caribbean islands she has no place in any section of caribbean society she does not belong to any part of caribbean society and uh, all the relationships she tries to forge within the caribbean society are rejected she rejects uh, or rather she rejects or they are rejected tia rejects her uh, advances tia is they cannot be friends uh, she rejects her colored cousins right she is not comfortable with col col colored cousins and later on daniel cosway her supposedly her half brother he is the one who plants seeds of distrust in rochester's mind later on we see that sandy also leaves her so all her attempts to find genuine place in jamaican society are rejected she belong she does not belong although she is from this place she does not belong to any section of the society uh, mr mason and uh, we have already discussed mr mason and anit cosway again a union of earlier on if this was a union of english and french and that was a problem here we have class barrier the new merchant class and the old impoverished uh, planter aristocracy right this one clueless about poet politics and society of jamaica and this one and it cost way powerless uh, this uh, if if marriage to mr mason brings in some kind of social standing and some kind of financial security it does not it still does not promise security to anit pierre dies and anit loses her mind after the fire at colibri and, uh, and the the you know her her son dying her her much beloved much loved child dying now uh, the final image i think the most impactful image not the final image because it go to the to go to the convent but the final uh, the most important image of part 1 is the burning of colibri and we know that it is a kind of a it has its arson he, it, the state ha, the estate has been set on fire by most perha, most probably by the uh, ex slaves over there and one of the most poignant images of this burning fire is the parrot with the clipped wings right trying to escape the fire shouting and yet in the end meets it meets it its death in the fire at colibri so the parrot with the clipped wings who is or what does this who does this parrot symbolize pierre who died in the fire anit who loses her mind who does everything that she can to save herself and her children but her wings are clipped by her gender by her by her economic condition by her race so is it is it anit or does it foreshadow does the parrot with clipped wings who dies at colibri foreshadow antoinette's end and thornfield in the fire that she sets to the mansion the burning of colibri and the parrot with clipped wings the parrot who cannot fly away and escape the fire uh, what it could symbolize any of these things pierre who dies there and it who is not able to save despite all her efforts or is it antoinette who's going to meet the same end at the of her life so that is part 1 we are going to move to part 2 in the next video